So I recently just got into LinkedIn and they asked me what position is it that I'm holding right now. I had no clue. I kind of do a little bit of everything. That's why I don't have a title to my position. So I asked my very good friend Joanne what I should put. And she said, mm, Managing director sounds pretty suitable. It's the more humble version of a CEO. And so I went with it. And that's how I became the MD of a local animal shelter named My Pets Haven. But usually I would just tell people that I run the social media of an animal shelter. I'm just used to telling people that because that was how I started off. I was 17 years old and I had just recently got into a breakup with my ex-boyfriend then. I was pretty much over the breakup already, but on the other hand, my ex wasn't. Now, before you go on to think that this is some psycho ex story, I'm sorry it's not, but it is quite a funny story. So my ex being really heartbroken, just really wanted to adopt a dog to forget about his problems. <laughs> and he so happened to see an ad on Facebook for puppies for adoption. Without thinking twice or even asking his parents, off he went to pick up the puppy from the ad person named Auntie Eileen at her pet shop named My Pet Haven. Now, he went for a puppy, but he came back with an adult dog named Tiny. His parents were furious and didn't allow him to keep the dog. So he called me and he asked if I could keep his dog. And my mom is not a dog person, so there was no chance of me keeping his dog. After fighting really hard to keep Tiny in his home for two days, he decided that it would be best to return Tiny to the shelter. So when he returned Tiny to the shelter that day, he stuck around to spend some time with the dogs and he helped Auntie Aline feed the strays at night. He knew that I would love being there because I'm a dog person and I really love dogs. And it's just that I've never owned one before because my mom didn't allow it. Even though we weren't really talking anymore, um, he still asked me if I wanted to go and I said, sure. And so one evening, he brought me over to meet Auntie Eileen and the dogs and we went to feed the strays and needless to say, I loved it. I had never been to a shelter before or even walked a dog before. So it was truly a new experience to me and I enjoyed every moment of it. During that period in time, I was especially intrigued by the pedigree breeds that came to board at the shelter, like the Rottweilers or the Golden Retrievers, because I've only ever seen them on TV and have never been so close up with one before. I started going to the shelter more often and Auntie Eileen taught me all there is to know about dogs and cats. Her passion and compassion for stray animals were really so inspiring and even up until today, I'm still inspired. So how did I become the MD of an animal shelter from being a naive young girl who did not know anything about animal welfare at all? Well, in short, I started an Instagram for my pet Haven. From the day Auntie Eileen started rescuing strays from the streets in 2011, she has funded everything with her own personal savings. In early 2018, we were sheltering about 35 dogs and 15 cats that were all rescued by Auntie Eileen and they all needed a home. But adoption rates were super low and the only donations that we got were from our customers who came by to buy pet food for their pets. It's always been tough on Auntie Eileen because she has to bear so much expenses for so many animals because our old rescues couldn't find a home while new rescues kept coming in. So that's where I stepped in and I created an Instagram to promote our animals for adoption. The account has managed to garner over 30,000 followers today and we have managed to rehome over a thousand animals in the span of four years. Although our adoption rate has picked up, rehoming our animals still remains a challenge today. There are still so many people who would rather spend thousands on pedigree breeds than to adopt our local mixed breeds for free simply because pedigree breeds look much cuter and it's much easier to fall in love with them at first sight. Here is a picture of a pug from the 1800s. They don't really look like the pugs that we see today. Their snouts are much longer as well as their legs, but they still look cute. 
but some people thought they could look much cuter. Let's not give them a snap and let's make their legs shorter too. So ladies and gentlemen, after some intense inbreeding for many decades, here we have a pup whose face looked like it got squished against a wall with a non-existent snout that gives them terribly bad breeding problems and legs so short that it gives them gait problems. But hey, they look so much cuter, don't they? Now, we are taking away their quality of life just so we could have a cuter version of a pet. When you choose to buy a pet from a pet shop, you are essentially supporting the pet in breeding industry and cruelty in puppy mills where the parent dogs are kept in tiny cages and have their vocal cords cut off just so they wouldn't make a ruckus or even bark for help so that these people can make a luxurious living out of them. I'm not denying that breeding and selectively choosing certain traits have an upside because we now have dogs that are able to contribute to solving crimes and also help disabled people with their day-to-day -day routine. But look at what we did to the pug to the bull terriers and to the bulldogs. We obviously did not breed them for the better and more often than not, we do not buy these dogs for those specific reasons. We buy them because they're cute and it's about time that we realize that these animals are not branded designer goods that we can pick and buy off a shelf. It is life that we're talking about and these lives are being taken so lightly. There is literally no reason why you would buy an Alaskan Malamute for 10,000 ringgit for it to live under this insufferable Malaysian heat other than the fact that it looks cute and super fluffy. If you live in an apartment where you could only own a small breed, then that's reasonable. But know that it is your responsibility to get to know your breeder because you do not know what happens behind closed doors. But if you could accommodate for such a large breed like an Alaskan Malamute that requires such high maintenance, why not just adopt and save a life? It is too bad that these mixed breeds were born common looking and their furs are not as unique as pedigree breeds so they do not appeal to us as much. But do you know why we think that they're so common looking? because we see them everywhere on the streets in Malaysia. Then you're gonna ask me, okay, am I not allowed to buy a husky of my own wish then? No, please, if you have money, then go ahead by all means. But what I'm trying to say is that it is especially crucial for us Malaysians to really live by adopting and not shopping because of our circumstances. Malaysia is not like Western countries where rarely any strays are seen on their streets. We have stray animals everywhere in Malaysia and our authorities do not care about these stray animals. They do not have a solution for them. Trap, neuter, release, manage is not practiced and the strays are just allowed to mate and multiply and when the residents start to think that these animals are being a nuisance to their neighborhood, they report to the authorities and the dog catchers will come. In 2018, my neighborhood dog was caught to the dog pound. The pound is located at Port Klang, where us normal citizens usually wouldn't travel to because there's nothing there other than the giant logistic containers and it's perfect because nobody can see how ill-managed the dog pound was. I can tell you that the dogs that I met then in 2018 have already died now because there's no future for the dogs that get caught there. My dog was there for one night and she came back with ears and a body full of ticks and she felt so sick afterwards. The place is full of diseases, the dogs live with their urine and feces without any clean water to drink or even a bowl to hold their food. The kibbles are just scattered into their kennels for them to eat from the ground. Puppies were kept in cages with their mothers behind the pound and some kennels have 10 dogs together because they were kept based on the area that they were caught from in case their owners come and claim them. These dog catchers don't care. If a dog is outside without wearing a registered tag from the council, they will catch a dog and it's actually jackpot for them because they will ask you for money if you want the dog back. Majority of the dogs there have already given up and you could see so much sadness in their eyes and how they're pleading you to save them. But what could I do? I took a video, posted it, raised some awareness, but 
it doesn't solve the real problem. And the truth is, these animals are helpless. They're not even up for adoption because they don't want us near that place. They don't want us to see the cruelty that's being done unto these dogs. They're bound to die in that horrible place and there's nothing we can do about it because the people who have power and could actually do something about it, they don't care. There was one particular dog in the pound that was on the verge of death. It was curled up, twitching and unable to respond. I asked the carekeeper, who is just a plain man who was hired to feed the dogs, if I could bring this dog to the vet or get a vet to come and save the dog. He said no. The dog just had to suffer and die silently. Dead dogs are just thrown outside the pound in a garbage plastic bag. These people treat these dogs with no respect at all. And I wonder how they can sleep so well at night. It's not possible for us rescuers or shelters to take in these dogs from the pound because they're diseased once they enter that place. And us rescuers and shelters, we have so many other dogs that we would be risking if we took in these dogs. Because these viruses spread like crazy. And if it's canine distemper, the survival rate does not look good at all. And the animal clinic cannot hospitalize these dogs because canine distemper is airborne and they will be risking all of the hospitalized dogs in their clinic. This is what I mean when I say it is so especially crucial for us Malaysians to really live by adopting and not shopping. These animals did not choose to be born as animals. And these animals did not choose to be born as straight. They don't deserve to be discriminated against just because they don't have a brand to their breed. I used to look at pedigree breeds just the same way as all of us do. Like they're more superior and premium compared to mixed breed. But I realized that these animals are all the same regardless of their breed. We want to own a pet because we want to find a companion in them. Or we want to have an addition to the family. And all our rescue animals are just as amazing and just as intelligent and just as capable of giving the same love as all these pedigree breeds. Mixed breeds are not any lesser than pedigree breeds and we just urge you to give these shelter animals a chance. When you adopt, you free up space in animal shelters for another stray to be rescued from the streets and away from these horrible dog pounds. When you adopt, you save a life. And it may not seem like it, but you really have because these animals used to be on the streets without any food, clean water or shelter from the rain or sun. But now, they have a home and they have a family who loves them and they don't ever have to sleep with an empty stomach anymore. And that's how easy it is to save a life, just by choosing to adopt. If you're not an animal person and you're still listening to my speech, thank you for listening to me ramble. And you can also do a part in helping these animals by not reporting them to the authorities if they happen to take a dump right in front of the house. Because if you report to the authorities, they will have to come because they will be reported for not doing their job. And yes, I understand that it's really frustrating to have poop right in front of your gate or rubbish scattered everywhere because they were scavenging the trash for leftover food. But we just have to be more understanding that these animals are just trying their best to survive on the streets and they do not deserve to be punished for that. If you see a stray looking for food, feed them. If you could do a little more, bring your neighborhood strays to the vet to get sterilized so that normal puppies and kittens will be born on the streets to suffer. Sterilization is the only way we can control our stray population. If you see a stray that is in need of help or medical attention, please help them. It is so easy to turn a blind eye to these animals that really need our aid. But if you think about it, we are the only ones who can help them. They don't have a doctor of their own species to attend to their medical needs. We are the ones who can. And only if you are willing to try and take action, you will realize how easy it is to help these poor animals live a better life. 
Your car can be washed again, money can be earned again, but these lives cannot be saved once it's gone. So let's do better for our stray animals because we can do so much better and they deserve so much better. Thank you.